What is going on, buddy? My name is Zella Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. And before we get started, I just like to say that this is the final recording I am making in this room and in this house as I am moving out by this point. And by the point this video comes out, I would have likely been moved into the new place by now. Um, so yeah, this will be my last recording for quite a while, but I do have plenty of other videos lined up in the meantime. So you guys will enjoy those. But today we're going to be reacting to an SCP video by Dr. By Dr. Bob. This is SCP-3859, Anti-Technotheistic Parasite. This caught my attention as I think this was, yeah, this was quite recent. This is 10 days ago by the making of this video. And I haven't been reacting to too many SCP videos these last two weeks because I had quite a lot lined up at the beginning of July. It is now August 3rd by the making of this video. And I have so many more SCP videos to react to in the future. I've got maybe 20 other SCP videos I have lined up to make. And I think by this point, there are still like seven left over from my earlier recordings in July. We got a lot of SCP stuff to catch up on, but we're going to go in a certain order where, I, where it's an SCP video one day and a regular uh, reaction video to whatever else in one day. So, yeah. So we're going ahead and get started in this because this is 20 minutes long. So we're just going to go ahead and get right start. Right ahead and start in three, two, one, boom. It is a mild evening in Paris, France, the and the sound of off. ticking clocks fills a modest church yeah, no, tucked just down a less populous street. From the outside, it looks like any ordinary Christian church, but inside, it is quite I different. Drink water too fast. There are I get gears and cogs on the walls where stained glass windows might ordinarily be placed, and the altar resembles the inner workings of a massive clock. What? The ticking sound is coming not from any timepieces, but from the congregation themselves. <laughs> This is a ceremony this is a for broken members of the cart work or yeah. an offshoot of the mechanists or the church of the broken god. Yeah, I, I couldn't say the word small, right. A little less than a dozen in attendance, but they are devout in their faith. A solemn hush. It has been a long time since I've actually reacted to anything really related to the to the church of the broken god. So this is a nice like reintroduction. Actually, I don't think I've actually reacted to anything related to the church of the broken god on this channel. I could be very wrong, but I've made so many SCP videos, I've kind of lost track. But if that's not the case, then this is a nice refresher. Falls over the room as the patriarch stands before them, holding a bottle my of mic, holy oil. So I can pour this he water. beckons up each congregant to the altar, where he anoints them with the oil on whatever cogwork augmentation is most easily accessible. Some have visible gears, others limbs made from brass. One man has a clock in the middle of his forehead like a third eye. Huh. After all have been anointed, they return to their seats and bow their heads in solemn prayer. Tick, tick, tick. The sound is rhythmic and constant, like one shared heart thrumming all together. Through the gears. The sound fills the room, steady as it always has been. But then, the pace changes suddenly, for the very first time. The ticking comes faster now, less like a familiar clock, and more like a bomb ready to go off. It ticks SCP faster. attack? Faster, faster. The sound of grinding metal the fills the room, foundation interrupting attack? whatever piece remained. The patriarch cries out in pain, holding his chest. His eyes widen, and all of a sudden, his chest explodes, metal fragments flying in every direction. One by one, the rest of the congregation follow, their augmented bodies failing them in a shocking display. Metal Whoa. legs fuse together, gears grind, spark, and explode. The rifle grafted into one man's arm begins firing at random. An internal combustion engine heart fails, and a woman collapses to the ground. All the while, the initial explosion has set fire to the old wooden beams of the building. It is all going up in flames. What just happened? By the time the authorities arrive on the scene, over 50,000 euros of damage has been done to the building. 50,000? The congregation is dead. It doesn't take long for the SCP Foundation to become involved, or for them to suspect foul play. The Cogwork Orthodoxy are relatively peaceful, and have never been involved in an incident quite like this before. 
No, someone planned I mean, this and executed it I meticulously. Guess. The question is, how and why? Well, I mean, the SCP Foundation is always hunting down the Church of the Broken God. So they can't re rebuild their um, god. I think his name was Mekain. I think it was Mekain. The one god that broke himself to bits across the world so that he can one day rebuild again. I mean, we have SCP-001 clockwork. Not, is it clockwork? Basically, the little box that has forces like it. Uh, there are so many SCP-001s. How do you keep track of every single one? Um, but the one that basically manipulates townspeople into helping it build, rebuild itself over and over and over and over again. <sighs> there are so many SCP-001s. How do you keep track of every single proposal? How do you people do this? Following the 2011 How do I do this? At the Cogwork Orthodoxy Church, Reacting to SCP videos for five years. ailment began popping up. The Foundation was able to take several up. bodies for autopsy, though the means by which this was accomplished are obscure to me. They determined well, yeah. that the failure of the victim's bodies and augmentations was caused by a parasitic infestation. Somehow, they had all been dosed with the same contaminated material. But what was the link between these parasites and technological failure on a massive, deadly scale? They had to, the oil the clues he poured. were scarce. And there was little to point the foundation in the direction of motive or means, as dozens of deaths were reported. With dozens. little else to go on, the foundation classified the parasites SCP-3859. Whatever their exact nature, they were like nothing anyone had ever seen before. That much was certain, even huh. if nothing else was. They were able to interview a victim after all of the previous infected had died on the scene. Following one of the attacks in Lyon, a Maxwellist was kept alive long enough for the Foundation to conduct an interview. He was able to communicate via writing, but the state of his SCP-3859 infestation rendered him unable to speak as it interfered with the function of his vocal processors. Oh. Rather than transmitting anything he wanted to say, they instead played a continuously looping message in French that translated to, You are nothing but an engine powered by ignorance. Forsake your superstition, your god of metal your blind faith that has caused you to suffer. We have created the antivirus for your technological blight. It the is. firewall to cleanse Europe of your influence. You are nothing but a flaw in history, and we shall cut you out. Vive la rationalité. Vive l'athéisme. The message continued to play until the subject's artificial pineal gland was destroyed, killing him. After this incident, the trail went cold for about a year. More huh. cases turned up, but they brought no information. Then a surprising So someone is actively targeting the Church of the Broken God and created this this uh, parasite to wipe them off the face of the planet. But who did this? What a Ooh, wait, I think I might know. Uh what the hell were they? The guys who worship flesh, what is the name of their cult? Oh my god, what is the name of their cult? Sarkists? No, that's not the exact name, but that's what they... <sighs> it's going to bother me until until I probably get an answer. But I'm pretty sure it's one of those guys. The guys who worship uh, flesh, disease, stuff like that. It all wide open, tipping over the first car. I mean, they, weren't they enemies the back then? Down. In late 2015, French parasitologist Frederick Lacroix was checked into the hospital after his pacemaker failed. While he was being examined, Unusual parasites were found in his system. They had somehow eaten away most of his pacemaker, and it failed after three days of intensive care. But there was something that set LaCroix apart from other victims of the parasite that the Foundation was beginning to call SCP-3859. He was a staunch atheist. In fact, he was so opposed to organized religion that he had previously been arrested after fighting with the priest in his hometown of Orléans. So huh. what, the Foundation wondered, made him the exception to the rule? Why did the Parasites choose him as their first non-religious target? Surely his field of research being parasitology couldn't be a coincidence. They decided to dispatch a team to investigate is. more thoroughly. Agent Catherine Dubois led a mobile task force operating under the cover story that they were national police officers investigating LaCroix's death. They went to LaCroix's house, attempting to uncover any clues that might indicate his connection to SCP-3859. After LaCroix's widow granted them access to the house, they began a thorough search. 
In his bedroom, they uncovered a large book entitled The Holy Bible with commentaries by C.I. Schofield and a guide to Bible study. This struck Wait. them as odd, given his atheist leanings, and one of the officers picked it up. It was partially hollow and rattled when shaken. They opened the book and tipped its contents out onto the desk. This would prove to be a mistake, as the desk promptly burst into flames. It had been booby-trapped. Luckily, oh. the task force moved quickly and was able to salvage oh, okay. the documents contained so, within. Well, not the much was lost. Consume them. They also put out the fire without alerting the widow Lacroix. But when the task force reached the door, they found more officers waiting there. These strangers also claimed to be from the national police, but the MTF smelled something fishy, and it wasn't the widow Lacroix making bouillabaisse. There was no way these officers were national police. They held Rugers when the national police were known to carry SIG pros. Yeah. No, these were not cops. The MTF had to get out of there, and fast. They ran out the back of the house and commandeered a vehicle from a, let's say, somewhat willing civilian. As they drove away, <laughs> gunfire ricocheted off the body of the car. The enemy officers were in pursuit, and they teleported their car Whoa. in front of the MTF in an attempt to cut them off. With the assistance of MTF Omega-5, the jewelers, the task force was able to evade this enemy force. They were also able to connect the weapons and technology to an existing group of interest. They seem to be affiliated with Rubis, or Rubis. Recovery, Use, Velascosity, and Inhibition of Singularities. A deeper look revealed LaCroix's true allegiance. He was a member of Saphir, a militant Saphir. atheist organization dedicated to wiping out religious organizations worldwide. This was the French branch. The English branch is known as Sapphire. One of the documents recovered from LaCroix's home revealed- Are those actual things or are they just made up for the SCP Foundation universe? Well, this allegiance titled, A Brief Manifesto Against the Mechanite Superstition and How to Topple It. They described followers of the Mechanite faith okay, so as this, people they're who hunting are down. not human, but their hearts beat to the tune of clockwork. Their breath is the humming of a computer fan and their muscles bulge with carbon fibers, the likes of which we can only hope to develop. Some of them even go so far as to replace their pineal glands, an organ often associated with the superstitious world. The manifesto lamented the inability of Saphir pamphlets to deprogram mechanites, people so devoted to their faith that they would change their bodies permanently. But this faith, in the words of the manifesto, would derive their doom. This is where the development of SCP-3859 comes in. In October of 2010, a mechanite was found and disassembled by Rubis agents. Whether they were alive or not during this process, I could not determine. In this mechanite's mm. body, Rubis agents found an organic interface virus or a virus created from nanotechnology. In short, an OIV is like a computer virus made material, made into okay. something that can infect a human body. This virus was intended to respond to strong mechanite faith and to prevent the organic parts of a person's body from rejecting their new inorganic modifications. But programming can be rewritten, and Saphir True. was determined to find a way to reverse the purpose of this OIV and cause it to reject these inorganic components. However, they ran into one problem. The virus would not interact directly with the human body. It was engineered for the specific mechanite it was found in and did not take to other human subjects. Wait, so it only... Then, Dr. Le but it only targets specific members? It doesn't just, like, attack all the machinery inside one's body? That's weird. Uh, why would they program it that way? Croy discovered an ingenious solution. The dead mechanite was not just full of technological augmentations, they were also infested with hookworms who had been infected with the OIV. He took these hookworms and created a new species named Ancylostoma nedlidae, named for the Luddites who destroyed technology deemed evil. The manifesto closed with a goal. By the close of 2015, we expect to eliminate any mechanite influence on the continent. So Dr. LaCroix created SCP-3859, but he also wound up in a hospital bed, dying as a result of his creation. Huh. His one mystery. So he literally killed himself in the process. <laughs> he literally took himself out. Was solved. Another revealed itself. What went wrong? The plot yeah, how, how did it go? More severe agents died in the wake of LaCroix's death. Six in total perished from an infestation of SCP-3859. Each was killed when their metal tooth fillings exploded, causing fatal brain hemorrhaging. We know the devastating impact that it has had. Some know it all too well. But what exactly is SCP-3859? The yes, Foundation was able us. to determine a bit about its nature. 
It is a microscopic parasite that has been infected with an OIV. This particular OIV results in nanotechnological augmentations to the parasite. It is in the same genus as Old World hookworm, but is hermaphroditic rather than dioecious, setting it apart from most hookworms. It also, closer study has revealed, appears to have been hybridized with tardigrade DNA at some point in the prior 200 generations. What? The function of SCP-3859 in the human body is to infest hosts with artificial components added to their physiology and to destroy them. Again, this is notably different from ordinary hookworms, who do not normally behave in an aggressive fashion or leave the digestive tracts of their hosts. This would suggest that the technological components of SCP-3859 are causing them to act in defiance of their nature. Saphir's aims in creating this augmented parasite are clear, but what is still unclear is what happened next. Why did LaCroix's creation turn on him? What happened? Well, when I yeah, first began looking happen? into SCP-3859, it seemed we would never know for sure. But then, Saphir released a statement, along with some formally classified files. I'll save those for later. First, a okay. statement, issued in December of 2015, to all Saphir agents. Effective immediately, all LaCroix hookworms in possession of Saphir are to be destroyed, and the program is to be discontinued. They are acting indiscriminately, affecting atheist and superstitious alike. Twenty have died from infestation, including LaCroix. LaCroix was a traitor and a mechanist. His rank is stripped, and his name will be wiped from our history. The statement what? is intriguing and includes some bold claims. The Foundation was not able to find any information linking LaCroix to mechanism or anything indicating him as some sort of double agent. Therefore, I was thrilled when a former Rubis agent was able to help the Foundation decipher LaCroix's original journal entries, eager to see what light they might shed on the whole matter. Nothing could prepare me for what I learned. So All right, let's hear we go. about LaCroix were wrong, and the truth was so much stranger than anyone could have anticipated, even the SCP Foundation. In his writings, Dr. LaCroix referred to the parasites as his children, an impulse that, though unsettling, I can sympathize with. It is a lonely business locked away with only one's research for the company. His aims with that research, however, I am a good deal less sympathetic to. Using research on the crucifix protein, a protein supposedly found in the brains of the devoutly religious, he modified the hookworms. Whenever they detected the presence of this compound, the parasites would become aggressive and highly destructive. They would seek out anything unnatural added to the human body and tear it apart with gusto. As a test subject, he selected the congregation of a church, one of whom was known to have a pacemaker. A friend of LaCroix's, hiding in plain sight amongst the clergy, spiked the communion wine with parasites on St. Valentine's oh. Day. The experiment was a success, from LaCroix's perspective at least. One poor parishioner dropped dead of a broken heart that Valentine's Day, or at least of an overloaded pacemaker. The next documented experiment was the fateful day of the Cogwork Orthodox Service in Paris, the day that the Foundation first discovered the existence of SCP-3859. LaCroix slipped oh. his children into the holy oil, and there were no survivors. On October 12, 2012, Dr. LaCroix received word from Nova Scotia that one of his severe colleagues had died. The cause of death? His teeth exploded, and there were signs that the hookworms had made their way into his system. Oh, shit. He had shit. been placed there as an aide to a cardinal, while reporting back to Saphir in secret. LaCroix theorized that he had begun to develop a sense of faith, and thus his death was his own fault. By June 17th of the same year, there were no more mechanists left in central France. Sure, a few fringe believers remained scattered through Paris, but most sects that had previously held a strong presence there either fled the country or simply perished. Dr. LaCroix considered himself victorious, but the bodies had not yet finished piling up. By May 4th, 2014, 10 people who worked alongside Dr. LaCroix on the project were dead. Autopsies revealed that all of them had the hookworms in their systems, and they had but all they get out? in contact with mechanites. Dr. LaCroix theorized that these colleagues had been hacked, and that the reclaimed technology in their bodies had been hacked by mechanite influences that left them vulnerable to the effects of the parasites. A software update would fix it. At least, that's what he thought. An analysis of the software showed no changes at all. Strange. Perhaps an explanation would reveal itself under further scrutiny. On March 7th, 2015, Dr. LaCroix began to feel ill. He experienced tremors, sweating, a fever, and persistent vomiting. The containment of his project had failed, and there were hookworms in his system. Not to worry, though. 
These hookworms wouldn't do much without the crucifix protein being present. He took some of the antiparasitics kept around at the lab and waited for his symptoms to abate. But on March 15th, he was still feeling ill. It was then that he realized a drastic error he had made. They had By evolved. changing the physiology of the worms and making them hermaphroditic, they were able to reproduce more quickly than the medication could kill them. He checked oh. himself into the hospital for more thorough treatment. After five days, the infection had been effectively addressed, and he was ready to recuperate and get back to work. But again, the situation was far worse than he realized. On March 23rd, Dr. LaCroix was working at his desk when he suddenly collapsed to the floor. His heart was seizing up, skipping beats at a time. It was his pacemaker, he realized. Its battery was running out. He would need to go to the hospital as soon as possible to have it repaired. But before he did, he decided to perform a few tests on himself. He took a sample of his blood and analyzed it. What he saw he was should infected. have been possible, but nevertheless, there they were. Crucifix proteins in his blood. The Crucifix blood of a protein. staunch non-believer. The worms were feasting. Somehow he had been poisoned with extreme faith. There was oh. no He was going to die at the hand of his own creation. He checked himself into the hospital and was informed by his doctors that there was nothing wrong with his blood except for the parasites present there. His pacemaker, on the other hand, was severely damaged. Its wires had been severed. Dr. LaCroix knew that the hookworms were the culprit and that he had a week left to live at most. But how had the crucifix proteins made their way into his blood? Yeah, had how? someone somehow injected him with a contaminated sample? But no, as much as he wanted to believe that, he knew it was something else. He had examined other blood samples that he kept around the lab for emergency transfusions, samples from dozens of his colleagues. Every single one of them contained the crucifix protein. Oh. And it was naturally occurring. No evidence of tampering. There was only one remaining explanation. His ultimate entry I will simply quote verbatim and let his dying words speak for themselves. The doctor says there's nothing wrong with my blood other than the parasites and my pacemaker wires have been severed. I maybe have a week left. I feel as if I am committing treason while writing this. I tested samples I keep in my lab for emergency transfusions. All of our blood has the crucifix protein and it's occurring naturally. We have failed. In our quest to make the world a reasonable place, we have made it a crusade. Saphir is a cult. Atheism is a religion. God help us. Though its use has decreased since 2015, huh. there are still active instances of... <laughs> still, basically got himself killed by his own creation in any way he had f didn't intend to. <laughs> SCP-3859 on the European continent. As a countermeasure, anti-parasitic drugs have been introduced into the water supply of France and its surrounding nations. A new EU regulation was also lobbied for by several foundation companies, increasing food safety standards for items such as Eucharist wafers and other consumables used in religious ceremonies. Any foundation personnel believed to have been infected with SCP-3859 must be administered a cocktail of antiparasitics and anti-oiviral drugs. The exact makeup of this cocktail may be accessed only by approved foundation medical personnel. Over the course of my time researching the outskirts of the known world, the places beyond our imaginations, I have come face to face with hundreds of belief systems. Some are off-putting, others comforting, and all of them alien to me. The one constant I have seen again and again is this. Extremism, the sort that seeks the elimination of all its opponents through whatever means necessary, always sows the seeds of its own destruction. True. It seems that Dr. LaCroix sowed those very seeds when he engineered SCP-3859 and reaped them in the most devastating fashion. The story of Saphir and its hookworms, the disease that turned on them when their fervor became violent, is a cautionary tale. Our beliefs can buoy us through the stormy sea of life, can lift us up and keep us sane. But if left entirely unchecked and unexamined, they can steer us straight into our doom. That was actually a pretty good SCP. I have I don't really react to that many uh, parasite related SCPs, not often at least. But this one stood out as the most interesting with me because we we got something with the Church of the Broken God related to it, <laughs> and we had, I don't recall in any of my uh, SCP videos, at least off the top of my head. That we reacted to anything that had something related or connected to the Church of the Broken of the Broken God.
and creating an SCP that's meant to counteract and attack them. Something we don't really, I don't really see that often, at least on my end of the camera. Still, this guy literally created his own demise by creating a faith of his own that helped him destroy, uh, you know, the Church of the Broken God. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. And this is the last reaction video I will currently be recording in this house. So, goodbye background, goodbye room, good, goodbye everything here. And say hello to the next, to my new place in the next video. Bye.